Salmon were extirpated in Lake Champlain in the 1800s. Since the 1970s, hatchery programs have been implemented annually to stock Atlantic salmon within the service system with the hopes of developing a self-sustaining population. After those initial attempts proved successful, New York State Department of Environmental Conservation got together with the Vermont Department of Fish and Wildlife and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and made a more cooperative and coordinated effort at restoration attempts. When you think of Atlantic salmon, it's sort of a keystone species, an indicator species. It's just a really neat thing to have in the watershed. I grew up in Vermont and some of my first memories are fishing on Lake Champlain, you know, with my father. Knowing that we're restoring a, this Atlantic salmon species back in the lake is just truly great. Salmon restoration has been complicated. Even successes like the first natural reproduction in 150 years brings new questions and challenges. A partnership of federal and state agencies, local businesses, universities and community organizations has provided a better understanding of the complex ecosystem and improved restoration efforts. The sea lamprey control program is almost like the foundation of the salmon restoration program. Sea lamprey larvae grow up in streams and head out to the lake as adults where they attach to salmon and other fish species resulting in wounding and often death of the fish. Sea lamprey control and trapping efforts target the juvenile lamprey in the rivers in the fall and returning adults in the spring. Without proper management of that population out there, we wouldn't have the survival of the adults. Our goal is to get the lampreyside into the concentration we want across the whole water column. As that's going on, we have a, a lab set up so that we can monitor the concentration and ensure that we're delivering a effective and safe treatment. Before the program, uh, what salmon or lake trout we did find in the lake, uh, we found wounding rates of close to 80 or 90 wounds per hundred fish. And now that we've controlled sea lamprey for a number of years, now we're down to wounding rates for salmon of 15 to 25 per hundred fish. And that's a huge reduction and that really impacts the survival of those salmon. The Lake Champlain restoration program really relies on stocking of salmon in the lake. We've established uh, a decent fishery on the lake, uh, but we are um, continuing to improve on our techniques. We're uh, employing different methods and projects to monitor the progress of the fish that are stocked in the lake. We have two water sources here, a well water source which is fairly constant in our surface water from Furnace Brook. We thought the natural temperature regime was uh, important for the, the development of the smolt, so we decided to take our landlocked salmon uh, late in the season and expose them to that colder water uh, from January through um, stock out in April. Uh, it resulted in a somewhat smaller fish, but a uh, fish that was more suited for stocking in the tributaries and returning as adults. We did realize a three-fold increase in comparison with the well water fish. Through these management actions, we find what works the best and we adapt our strategies to help refine and improve our ability to produce better salmon runs. We hopefully encourage more salmon to spawn naturally. For six years, we stocked equal numbers from eggs from returning feral adults and equal numbers of fish that were reared from eggs produced from the domestic brood line. Tag number 2929, male. We found that fish that were out in the wild return in greater numbers than, than did the fish produced from the domesticated broodstock. The introduction of alewife, a forage fish, to Lake Champlain in 2003 is another significant challenge for salmon managers. Salmon end up eating these alewife, they end up developing a vitamin B deficiency. What ends up happening is the eggs produced by the salmon when they're vitamin B deficient end up having neurological abnormalities. It was questionable for a few years about whether or not they would even be able to reproduce at all. 
Efforts are underway to understand the impact of vitamin B deficiency on natural reproduction and fry survival in the wild. Potential solutions include developing a vitamin B deficiency tolerant broodstock in the hatchery. So essentially we snorkel and do electrofishing in these areas to go look for their juveniles and the goal is to quantify the reproductive success by doing a parentage analysis and uh, trying to link the juveniles to the parents. So it's really encouraging that we're finding fish here because it does mean that they can naturally reproduce. Scientists identified natural origin fry in the Winooski River in Vermont in 2016 and the Boquette River in New York in 2017. These were the first naturally reproduced fry in Lake Champlain in 150 years, a significant success story in the effort to restore salmon to the watershed. Lamprey, alewives, and sedimentation all affect salmon populations in Lake Champlain. However, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, in partnership with dam operators, has been investigating other obstacles to viable habitat. Once they come into the Winooski River, the first dam on the river has a fish lift. So in the fall, we can lift those adult salmon and move them upstream above the next two dams. So then they have the whole river up to Bolton Dam, plus all the tributaries to go into in the fall and spawn. So another aspect that we're focusing on is monitoring the survival and movements of the adult salmon after we pass them upstream. We're using radio telemetry to look at the ways in which the salmon move throughout the river, particularly how they um, spawn and how, when they migrate um, up to the river and back down to the river around when they spawn. We've tagged 20 fish so far. We have antennas set up at four fixed sites and then we see when they move past those. And then we use some mobile tracking to see if we can see more fine scale movements. Radio telemetry monitoring provides critical information on habitat needed for reproduction in the upper Winooski River. The effort will also help improve passage at dams by providing data about the movement of salmon downstream to the lake after reproducing. That means the power companies uh, need to maintain passage facilities. We've recently evaluated those passage facilities and we found it was difficult for the salmon to move through because of the, the operations. And so we've been working with the power company with that information we have about how they approach the dam and how they pass through it, either over the spill or through the bypass or through the turbine. And we worked with them to improve their operation at that dam. Strong conservation partnerships, adaptive management, and community support have helped bring river runs of salmon back to Lake Champlain. Efforts to manage rivers that support self-sustaining salmon populations still face many challenges. But growing public understanding and engagement are helping to achieve large-scale river restoration in the Lake Champlain Basin. We do still have quite a bit of work to do in terms of improving our riparian areas or the trees and and uh, buffer zones alongside of the river to reduce those fines and inputs. Getting that message out to people so they understand the importance of protecting the watershed in general is, is huge. <laughs> to watch more videos in the Bringing Back Salmon series and to find out where you can learn more about landlocked Atlantic salmon, please visit lcbp.org salmon.